teachers. I'm here to give you a short video on getting started with Google Classroom. This is a beginner's video for those who are completely new to Google Classroom, who need to get one set up and need to uh, have students join their classroom. So this can be a video for the very beginners, uh, those without a classroom, or maybe those who went to a workshop, set one up, but really haven't used it and need a refresher, uh, this might be for you. First thing we're gonna do is we need to get to Google Classroom, and there's a variety of ways to do that. You just need a device with internet access. It could be a Chromebook, an iPad, uh, an iPhone, a Mac. It does not matter what the device is, um, but you will need to log into your Medford account as well. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna use my Google Chromebook, and I have um, Classroom bookmarked already because it's simply just a website. Uh, or you can click click on the little waffle icon here and you'll see that Classroom is one of your icons here as well. Um, it, however you do it, just make sure you get to Google Classroom. When you're here at Google Classroom, our screens may look different depending on what you have. Um, I have Classrooms already set up. Uh, you may have one or two that you've joined and they will all show up here. As a teacher, you have two options, either to join or create a class. Students have one option, join. And I'll show you how students join in just a second. In order to create a classroom, you're just gonna click on this little plus sign here, and then you press create a class. Um, and then it's gonna ask you what the name of the class is. I'm just gonna call this a test class, and you can fill this information as you need to. And now I press create. There's a couple of things you do need to think about while we're waiting for this to load up. Um, if you are one teacher teaches multiple subjects, you might want to consider having a classroom for each subject area. It helps to keep the kids organized and your work separate from each other. Um, I found that uh, most teachers tend to do it this way. Um, it just makes it a little bit easier for everyone. Also, um, if you are a teacher like myself who teaches multiple students across all different grade levels, you might want to have a classroom for each grade level rather than each class. You'll find that you are um, creating more work for yourself uh, and reposting many assignments to the same classrooms. So it becomes more work and we want this to be more manageable we don't want this to be more work for us we want this to be manageable but an, an effective tool for us to deliver uh, instruction uh, at home or in the classroom so here i've created my first classroom this is called test and you are automatically by default brought to the stream um, page and there are four tabs at the top there is stream classic people and grades and we'll see them in just a second the stream is the place where you would put announcements um, maybe crazy sock days tomorrow or tomorrow don't forget your scissors uh, you might want to have a morning message that's where those would go this is the place where you put announcements, not actual work. So you're not going to put any assignments here. It's simply just a place for announcements. Kids ask questions here or they communicate with one another here in the stream. The classwork tab is where you are going to put your assignments. And we will have a more detailed video on the adding assignments, but for now, that's, this is kind of what it looks like. Uh, your people tab is where you will see the teachers and the students that are in this classroom. Right now, I do not have any students at it, and the only teacher here is me. But this is the great thing about Google Classroom. You can add multiple teachers to one classroom. So if you are a two-teacher model, then you can add an additional teacher. You don't have to both have a separate classroom. You would work together on one. So it makes it really nice. And all you would do is click on this plus sign here, type in that teacher's email, they will get an invite, and when they uh, accept that invitation, their name will appear on your screen. For students, you need to uh, have them join, and there's three ways really to do this. If you're in the classroom with you and they're right in front of you, in the very uh, first page on the stream where your title page is, you'll see it right underneath the title says class code and the code is there with a little square and you can click on it and press the display and the students would type it in. Um, 
if your students are not right there in front of you, if you go to the people tab, it will say, here is your code. You can just copy and paste this code, put it in an email to their parents, uh, and their parents at home can get them set up and joined into your classroom. You can do it that way. Um, there's another way that you can do this too, is you can actually manually invite students. So if you feel that uh, maybe this might get lost in translation in an email, or um, maybe your students are a little bit younger because the younger kids have a little bit harder time typing it, the display um, code in, or um, they have a little bit trouble, you know, their parents might have a little bit trouble getting into it, you can manually invite them. Now this would work if you have only a small amount of students, um, but you can type in the student's email and when they go to classroom, your class, uh, your classroom will actually appear on their screen and they will just have to press the blue button to accept it and they're automatically in. So that's easier for younger students. Um, you would just type in their email, the student's email to uh, have them be invited. And our Medford emails work like this. It's the first two letters of the student's first name then their whole last name, and then the year they're gonna graduate from eighth grade. I have that paper for you, so if you're interested in that or need that, I can get that to you, um, but it will um, change year to year. So uh, if you need that, just contact me and I will get that to you. Uh, and then of course you'll need to add the at medford.k12.nj.us, and then your students will get the invite on their classroom. So that's one way to do it. As we get further into our classroom, you will see there's a tab for grades, and this is where the grades will show up as well. I want to show you a couple other things. There's a little gear over here, and that gear will give you class details. Uh, you'll see your code again. You will have the option, too, that students can post and comment, or students can only comment, or only teachers can post and comment. Right now, I always put it to the students can only comment. I do not allow them to post. So um, that is something that you might want to consider. Um, on the stream, when I post assignments, they automatically show up on the stream. I can actually hide my notifications. So they only see announcements on the stream and not classwork that has been added. It's up to you as well. And you'll have to maybe decide that. And you can always change this at any time. You can also show deleted items or garden summaries, we'll talk about that a little bit later. And then you have some grading options, which we'll go into detail more later. So I just press save to, to save any changes that I have made. Um, the other thing too is right up over here on your left-hand side, you'll have these three little lines. And this uh, is also very handy. This will get you to all of your classrooms so you can switch back and forth. It will show you the ones that you are enrolled in and any archived classes. And we'll talk about that, um, I think, a little bit in another detailed video. Um, but I think this is great, too. If you click on the home for classes, you will always get back to your page that shows you all the classrooms. Um, so I'm going to leave you here with that. So that way you can get a classroom set up figure out how you're going to have your students join and kind of figure out and maybe talk to other folks about how you want to set up your classrooms. Um, it does take a little bit of time to kind of process this and figure out what might work out the best. Um, I, I'll show you um, once you set up assignments in classwork, you will have little topics that are set up here. And this could be math, science, reading. But the only problem is that you will have all your math assignments under math, and that's a lot for some kids to look for. Um, instead, if this was a math classroom, you could have unit one, unit two, unit three, or you could go by date. That might be more manageable for your students as well. So just something to think about. So you do have to consider all that before you actually get started by setting up a classroom is figuring out how to organize it so it works best for you and your students. And of course, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me, mschoenberger at medford.k12.nj.us, and um, I'm here to help you. So good luck. Get your first classroom set up. Let's get those kids into your classroom, and then we will start talking about assignments. Okay? Have a great day.